Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. And today's founder is Caleb Gibbs, the leader of Washington's lifeguards. Now, we should start out with Washington himself. When the Revolutionary War began, it was kind of obvious that Washington was a pretty important character, and if something were to happen to Washington, that would be bad not just for Washington and for the army, but symbolically for the revolutionary cause. And everyone knew this none better than George Washington. So uh, he comes in and takes over the army, the Continental Army, uh, outside of Boston during the Siege of Boston after Lexington and Concord. And then Washington kind of quickly has to reorganize things, enlistments are expiring, the army is a mess, and Washington goes in, and one of the earliest things he does is he creates what became known as Washington's Lifeguards. Uh, the official name was the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, but it was unofficially known as Washington's Lifeguards. Now, the Lifeguards were responsible for a ton of things, but I want to note, the first person he chose was Caleb Gibbs, a 28-year-old man from Massachusetts who actually had an uncle that George had been friendly with and fought with in the French and Indian War uh, a decade and a half earlier, which is probably how Caleb was pretty well known to Washington. Now, in this position, Caleb became part of Washington's family, and Washington's family is uh, generally the, uh, um, how do I say, uh, usually younger men. Uh, it was the, the aides de camp who worked directly with Washington. Gibbs was a little bit older than most of these men, though he wasn't technically an aide de camp, he was uh, overseeing the lifeguard. So in this position, Gibbs had to make sure Washington wasn't killed, which included wash watching Washington as he was on the move, uh, finding the best camp locations for Washington, uh, uh, cleaning up that camp, securing it, keeping guard of Washington while he slept, but also keeping guard of all of Washington's belongings and all of the commander-in-chief's belongings, which is different. Washington had personal belongings, but as commander-in-chief, Washington was in charge of the things of the Continental Army, and this includes, probably most importantly, the money. The money of the Continental Army was in Caleb Gibbs' hands for the first several years of the war. Now, Washington survives, so it seems like Gibbs did a pretty good job. Uh, I do want to note, there are a few things here about what Washington was looking for in a person when they found Gibbs. Uh, everything from height to, quote, sobriety, honesty, and good behavior were desirable for Washington. And I really like this particular quote. Uh, uh, quote, as there is nothing more desirable than cleanliness in a soldier. Uh, is, is really telling. Is Washington wanted clean soldiers. And this is what he got in Caleb Gibbs, a guy with good hygiene, at a time where hygiene at large was pretty poor. Uh, Gibbs does this. He ends up going, like I said, spends several years in this position. Um, eventually, the, the army is reorganized, and Gibbs, who had been a major, would have had to have a demotion to remain in the same position. So he ends up uh, resigning as commander of Washington's lifeguards, but he does continue with the Continental Army for the remainder of the year. He, uh, Gibbs would actually go on, remainder of the war, I should say, Gibbs would actually go on and be wounded at the Battle of Yorktown. Now, fortunately for him, he survives this, uh, goes back to private life for the 1780s until uh, the Constitution comes around and Washington is elected president. And once George Washington becomes president, well, he has to start appointing some federal positions. And among these federal positions are... Uh, uh, one of which is uh, overseer of the Charleston Naval Yard. Uh, and he would give this position to Caleb Gibbs. It's one of many ports and, and other uh, collectors, customs positions given out by George Washington. Caleb Gibbs becomes, the, uh, uh, becomes in charge of the Charlestown Naval Yard. And the reason this is important is Gibbs ends up spending a good portion of his life overseeing the construction of some of the earliest ships built for the young United States Navy, including probably most notably the USS Constitution, one of the most famous boats, vessels, ships of American history. And uh, we have Caleb Gibbs to thank for that, as well as watching over Washington's back. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, definitely hit like. If you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos about the American Revolution seven days a week. Also, there is a link below to my new merch on my shop page. I think you'll like some of the stylized designs on there if you're a fan of the American Revolution. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.